These reasonings are unconnected. I am richer than you, therefore I am better. I am more eloquent than you, therefore I am better. The connection is rather this. I am richer than you, therefore my property is greater than yours. I am more eloquent than you, therefore my style is better than yours. But you, after all, are neither property nor style. How long are you going to wait before you demand the best for yourself and in no instance bypass the discriminations of reason? You have been given the principles that you ought to endorse and you have endorsed them. What kind of teacher then are you still waiting for in order to refer your self-improvement to him? You are no longer a boy but a full-grown man. If you are careless and lazy now and keep putting things off, and always deferring the day after which you will attend yourself, you will notice that you are making no progress, but you will live and die as someone quite ordinary. From now on then resolve to live as a grown-up who is making progress, and make whatever you think best a law that you never set aside, and whenever you encounter anything that is difficult or pleasurable, or highly or lowly regarded, Remember that the contest is now. You are at the Olympic Games. You cannot wait any longer. And that your progress is wrecked or preserved by a single day and a single event. That is how Socrates fulfilled himself, by attending to nothing except reason in everything he encountered. And you, although you are not yet a Socrates, should live as someone who at least wants to be a Socrates. You know yourself what you are worth in your own eyes, and at what price you will sell yourself, for men sell themselves at various prices. This is why when Floris was deliberating whether he should appear at Nero's shows, taking part in the performance himself, Agrippinus replied, appear by all means. And when Floris inquired, but why do you not appear, he answered, because I do not even consider the question, for the man who has once stooped to consider such questions and to reckon up the value of external things is not far from forgetting what manner of man he is. True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future, not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient, for he that is so wants nothing. The greatest blessings of mankind are within us, and within our reach. A wise man is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he has not. Wild animals run from the dangers they actually see, and once they have escaped them, worry no more. We, however, are tormented alike by what is past and what is to come. A number of our blessings do us harm, for memory brings back the agony of fear, while foresight brings it on prematurely. No one confines his unhappiness to the present. Most of what passes for legitimate entertainment is inferior or foolish, and only caters to or exploits people's weaknesses. Avoid being one of the mob who indulges in such pastimes. Your life is too short, and you have important things to do. Be discriminating about what images and ideas you permit into your mind. If you yourself don't choose what thoughts and images you expose yourself to, someone else will, and their motives may not be the highest. It is the easiest thing in the world to slide imperceptibly into vulgarity, but there's no need for that to happen if you determine not to waste your time and attention on mindless pap. So you wish to conquer in the Olympic Games, my friend, and I too, but first mark the conditions and the consequences. You will have to put yourself under discipline, to eat by rule, to avoid cakes and sweet meats, 
to take exercise at the appointed hour, whether you like it or not, in cold and heat, to abstain from cold drinks and wine at your will. Then, in the conflict itself, you are likely enough to dislocate your wrist or twist your ankle, to swallow a great deal of dust and be severely thrashed, and after all of these things, to be defeated. Tentative efforts lead to tentative outcomes. Therefore, give yourself fully to your endeavors. Decide to construct your character through excellent actions and determine to pay the price of a worthy goal. The trials you encounter will introduce you to your strengths. Remain steadfast, and one day you will build something that endures, something worthy of your potential. Live a good life. If there are gods and they are just, then they will not care how devout you have been, but will welcome you based on the virtues you have lived by. If there are gods, but unjust, then you should not want to worship them. If there are no gods, then you will be gone, but will have lived a noble life that will live on in the memories of your loved ones. Concentrate every minute like a Roman, like a man, on doing what's in front of you with precise and genuine seriousness, tenderly, willingly, with justice, and on freeing yourself from all other distractions. Yes, you can, if you do everything as if it were the last thing you were doing in your life, and stop being aimless, stop letting your emotions override what your mind tells you, stop being a hypocrite, self-centered, irritable. You see how few things you have to do to live a satisfying and reverent life. If you can manage this, that's all even the gods can ask of you. At dawn, when you have trouble getting out of bed, tell yourself, I have to go to work as a human being. What do I have to complain of if I'm going to do what I was born for? the things I was brought into the world to do? Or is this what I was created for, to huddle under the blankets and stay warm? So you were born to feel nice, instead of doing things and experiencing them. Don't you see the plants, the birds, the ants and spiders and bees, going about their individual task, putting the world in order as best they can? And you're not willing to do your job as a human being, why aren't you running to do what your nature demands? You don't love yourself enough, or you'd love your nature too, and what it demands of you. Men are not disturbed by things, but by the views which they take of things. Thus death is nothing terrible, else it would have appealed so to Socrates. But the terror consists in our notion of death, that it is terrible. When therefore we are hindered, or disturbed, or grieved, let us never impute it to others, but to ourselves. That is, to our own views. It is the action of an uninstructed person to reproach others for his own misfortunes, of one entering upon instruction to reproach himself, and of one perfectly instructed to reproach neither others or himself. For what prevents us from saying that the happy life is to have a mind that is free, lofty, fearless and steadfast, a mind that is placed beyond the reach of fear, beyond the reach of desire, that counts virtue the only good, baseness the only evil, and all else but a worthless mass of things which come and go without increasing or diminishing the highest good, and neither subtract any part from the happy life nor add any part to it. A man thus grounded must, whether he wills or not, necessarily be attended by constant cheerfulness and a joy that is deep and issues from deep within. Since he finds delight in his own resources and desires no greater joys than his inner joys. My advice is really this. 
what we hear the philosophers saying and what we find in their writings should be applied in our pursuit of the happy life. We should hunt out the helpful pieces of teaching and the spirited and noble-minded sayings which are capable of immediate practical application, not far-fetched or archaic expressions or extravagant metaphors and figures of speech, and learn them so well that the words become works. No one, to my mind, lets humanity down quite so much as those who study philosophy, as if it were a sort of commercial skill, and then proceed to live in a quite different manner from the way they tell other people to live. For it is dangerous to attach oneself to the crowd in front, and so long as each one of us is more willing to trust another than to judge for himself, we never show any judgment in the matter of living, but always a blind trust and a mistake that has been passed on from hand to hand finally involves us and works our destruction. It is the example of other people that is our undoing. Let us merely separate ourselves from the crowd and we shall be made whole. But as it is, the populace, defending its own iniquity, pits itself against reason. And so we see the same thing happening that happens at the elections, where, when the fickle breeze of popular favor has shifted, the very same persons who chose the praetors wonder that those praetors were chosen. Or is it your reputation that's bothering you? But look at how soon we're all forgotten. The abyss of endless time that swallows it all. The emptiness of those applauding hands. The people who praise us. How capricious they are. How arbitrary. And the tiny region it takes place. The whole earth a point in space. And most of it uninhabited. Just that you do the right thing, the rest doesn't matter. Cold or warm, tired or well rested, despised or honored, dying or busy with other assignments, because dying too is one of our assignments in life. There as well, to do what needs doing. Look inward, don't let the true nature of anything elude you. Before long, all existing things will be transformed to rise like smoke, assuming all things become one, or be dispersed in fragments, to move from one unselfish act to another, with God in mind, only there delight and stillness, when jarred unavoidably by circumstances, revert at once to yourself, and don't lose the rhythm more than you can help, you'll have a better grasp of the harmony, if you keep going back to it. Difficulty shows what men are. Therefore, when a difficulty falls upon you, remember that God, like a trainer of wrestlers, has matched you with a rough young man. Why? So that you may become an Olympic conqueror, but it is not accomplished without sweat. Your happiness depends on three things, all of which are within your power your will, your ideas concerning the events in which you are involved, and the use you make of your ideas. Don't just say you have read books, show that through them you have learned to think better, to be a more discriminating and reflective person. Books are the training weights of the mind, they are very helpful, but it would be a bad mistake to suppose that one has made progress simply by having internalized their contents. Some things are in our control and others not. Things in our control are opinion, pursuit, desire, aversion, and in a word, whatever are our own actions. Things not in our control are body, property, reputation, command, and in one word, whatever are not our actions. The things in our control are by nature free, unrestrained, unhindered, 
Those not in our control are weak, slavish, restrained, belonging to others. Remember then that if you suppose that things which are slavish by nature are also free, and that which belongs to others is your own, then you will be hindered, you will lament, you will be disturbed, and you will find fault with both gods and men. But if you suppose that only to be your own which is your own, and what belongs to others such as it really is, then no one will ever compel you or restrain you. Further, you will find fault with no one or accuse no one. You will do nothing against your will. No one will hurt you. You will have no enemies and you will not be harmed. Never depend on the admiration of others. There is no strength in it. Personal merit cannot be derived from an external source. It is not to be found in your personal associations, nor can it be found in the regard of other people. It is a fact of life that other people, even people who love you, will not necessarily agree with your ideas, understand you, or share your enthusiasms. Grow up. Who cares what other people think about you? It is not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. He who laughs at himself never runs out of things to laugh at. Only the educated are free. The greater the difficulty, the more glory in surmounting it. Skillful pilots gain their reputation from storms and tempests. He is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. Seek not the good in external things, seek it in yourselves. If anyone tells you that a certain person speaks ill of you, do not make excuses about what is said of you, but answer, he was ignorant of my other faults, else he would not have mentioned these alone. Any person capable of angering you becomes your master. He can anger you only when you permit yourself to be disturbed by him. Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. Don't explain your philosophy, embody it. There is only one way to happiness, and that is to cease worrying about the things which are beyond the power of our will. If you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid with regard to external things. Don't wish to be thought to know anything, and even if you appear to be someone important to others, distrust yourself, for it is difficult to both keep your faculty of choice in a state conformable to nature, and at the same time acquire external things. But while you are careful about the one, you must of necessity neglect the other. The key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. If you would be a reader, read. If a writer, write. God has entrusted me with myself. No man is free who is not master of himself. A man should so live that his happiness shall depend as little as possible on external things. The world turns aside to let any man pass who knows where he is going. Remember, it is not enough to be hit or insulted to be harmed. 
You must believe that you are being harmed. If someone succeeds in provoking you, realize that your mind is complicit in the provocation. Which is why it is essential that we not respond impulsively to impressions. Take a moment before reacting and you will find it easier to maintain control. A ship should not ride on a single anchor, nor a life on a single hope. Demand not that things happen as you wish, but wish them to happen as they do, and you will go on well. Remember that you ought to behave in life as you would at a banquet. As something is being passed around, it comes to you. Stretch out your hand, take a portion of it politely. It passes on, do not detain it. Or it has not yet come to you. Do not project your desire to meet it, but wait until it comes in front of you. So act toward children, so toward a wife, so toward office, so toward wealth. Events do not just happen, but arrive by appointment. Either God wants to abolish evil and cannot, or he can but does not want to. It is unrealistic to expect people to see you as you see yourself. When you wake up in the morning, tell yourself, the people I deal with today will be meddling, ungrateful, arrogant, dishonest, jealous, and surly. They are like this because they can't tell good from evil. But I have seen the beauty of good and the ugliness of evil, and have recognized that the wrongdoer has a nature related to my own. Not of the same blood and birth, but the same mind, and possessing a share of the divine and so none of them can hurt me. No one can implicate me in ugliness, nor can I feel angry at my relative or hate him. We were born to work together, like feet, hands, and eyes, like the two rows of teeth, upper and lower. To obstruct each other is unnatural. To feel anger at someone, to turn your back on him, these are unnatural. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. Casting aside other things, hold to the precious few, and besides bear in mind that every man lives only the present, which is an indivisible point, and that all the rest of life is either past or is uncertain. Brief is man's life, and small the nook of earth where he lives. Brief too is the longest posthumous fame, buoyed only by a succession of poor human beings, who will very soon die and who will know little of themselves, much less of someone who died long ago. The soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. Do not act as if you were going to live 10,000 years. Death hangs over you. While you live, while it is in your power, be good. Dwell on the beauty of life. Watch the stars and see yourself running with them. Think constantly on the changes of the elements into each other, for such thoughts wash away the dust of earthly life. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it.
If any man despises me, that is his problem. My only concern is not doing or saying anything deserving of contempt. The first rule is to keep an untroubled spirit. The second is to look things in the face and know them for what they are. Never let the future disturb you. You will meet it if you have to, with the same weapons of reason which today arm you against the present. How much time he gains who does not look to see what his neighbor says or does or thinks, but only at what he does himself, to make it just and holy. Very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. Whenever you are able to find fault with someone, ask yourself the following question. What fault of mine most nearly resembles the one I am about to criticize? If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it, and this you have the power to revoke at any moment. The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. If someone is able to show me that what I think or do is not right, I will happily change, for I seek the truth, by which no one was ever truly harmed. It is the person who continues in his self-deception and ignorance who is harmed. I have often wondered how it is that every man loves himself more than all the rest of men, but yet sets less value on his own opinion of himself than on the opinion of others. Perfection of character is this, to live each day as if it were your last, without frenzy, without apathy, without pretense. A person's worth is measured by the worth of what he values. Observe always that everything is the result of change and get used to thinking that there is nothing nature loves so well as to change existing forms and make new ones like them. Be like the cliff against which the waves continually break, but it stands firm and tames the fury of the water around it. A man must stand erect, not be kept erect by others. Limiting one's desires actually helps to cure one of fear. Cease to hope, and you will cease to fear. Widely different as fear and hope are, the two of them march in unison like a prisoner and the escort he is handcuffed to. Fear keeps pace with hope. Both belong to a mind in suspense, to a mind in a state of anxiety through looking into the future. Both are mainly due to projecting our thoughts far ahead of us, instead of adapting ourselves to the present. No one could endure lasting adversity if it continued to have the same force as when it first hit us. We are all tied to fortune, some by a loose and golden chain, and others by a tight one, of baser metal. But why does it matter? We are all held in the same captivity, and those who have bound others are themselves in bonds, 
unless you think perhaps that the left-hand chain is lighter. One man is bound by high office, another by wealth, good birth weighs some down, and a humble origin others. Some bow under the rule of men, and some under their own. Some are restricted to one place by exile, others by priesthoods. All life is a servitude. So you have to get used to your circumstances, complain about them as little as possible, and grasp whatever advantage they have to offer. No condition is so bitter that a stable mind cannot find some consolation in it. As far as I am concerned, I know that I have lost not wealth, but distractions. The body's needs are few. It wants to be free from cold, to banish hunger and thirst with nourishment. If we long for anything more, we are exerting ourselves to serve our vices, not our needs. And so there is no reason for you to think that any man has lived long because he has grey hairs or wrinkles. He has not lived long, he has existed long. For what if you should think that man had had a long voyage, who had been caught by a fierce storm as soon as he left the harbour, and swept hither and thither by a succession of winds that raged from different quarters, had been driven in a circle around the same course. Not much voyaging did he have, but much tossing about. We suffer more in imagination than in reality. If you want to escape the things that harass you, what you're needing is not to be in a different place, but to be a different person. Sometimes even to live is an act of courage. Fire tests gold, suffering tests brave men. Enjoy present pleasures in such a way as not to injure future ones. They lose the day in expectation of the night, and the night in fear of the dawn. It is not that we have so little time, that we lose so much. The life we receive is not short, but we make it so. We are not ill provided, but use what we have wastefully. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. The greatest obstacle to life is expectancy, which hangs upon tomorrow and loses today. You are arranging what lies in fortune's control and abandoning what lies in yours. What are you looking at? To what goal are you straining? The whole future lies in uncertainty. Live immediately. If a man knows not to which port he sails, no wind is favourable. Anger, if not restrained, is frequently more hurtful to us than the injury that provokes it. All cruelty springs from weakness. Difficulties strengthen the mind, as labour does the body. Withdraw into yourself, as far as you can. Associate with those who will make a better man of you. Welcome those whom you yourself can improve. The process is mutual, for men learn while they teach. He who spares the wicked, injures the good.
You act like mortals in all that you fear, and like immortals in all that you desire. He suffers more than necessary, who suffers before it is necessary. A gift consists not in what is done or given, but in the intention of the giver or doer. People are frugal in guarding their personal property, but as soon as it comes to squandering time, they are most wasteful of the one thing in which it is right to be stingy. Every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. To win true freedom, you must be a slave to philosophy. It is a rough road that leads to the heights of greatness. Often, a very old man has no other proof of his long life than his age. No man is crushed by misfortune unless he has first been deceived by prosperity. Man conquers the world by conquering himself. Better to trip with the feet than with the tongue. Well-being is realized by small steps, but is truly no small thing. Nothing is more hostile to a firm grasp on knowledge than self-deception. The goal of life is living in agreement with nature. We have two ears and one mouth, so we should listen more than we say. If you lay violent hands on me, you'll have my body, but my mind will remain with Stilpo. Happiness is a good flow of life. A bad feeling is a commotion of the mind repugnant to reason and against nature. No loss should be more regrettable to us than losing our time, for it's irretrievable. Wealth is able to buy the pleasures of eating, drinking, and other sensual pursuits, yet can never afford a cheerful spirit or freedom from sorrow. In our control is the most beautiful and important thing, the thing because of which even the God himself is happy, namely, the proper use of our impressions. We must concern ourselves absolutely with the things that are under our control and entrust the things not in our control to the universe. If you accomplish something good with hard work, the labor passes quickly, but the good endures. If you do something shameful in pursuit of pleasure, the pleasure passes quickly, but the shame endures. Choose to die well while you can. Wait too long, and it might become impossible to do so.
If we were to measure what is good by how much pleasure it brings, nothing would be better than self-control. If we were to measure what is to be avoided by its pain, nothing would be more painful than lack of self-control. From good people you will learn good, but if you mingle with the bad, you will destroy such soul as you had. You will earn the respect of all if you begin by earning the respect of yourself. Don't expect to encourage good deeds in people conscious of your own misdeeds. Since every man dies, it is better to die with distinction than to live long. To accept injury without a spirit of savage resentment, to show ourselves merciful towards those who wrong us, being a source of good hope to them, is characteristic of a benevolent and civilized way of life. We will train both soul and body when we accustom ourselves to cold, heat, thirst, hunger, scarcity of food, hardness of bed, abstaining from pleasures and enduring pains. What good are gilded rooms or precious stones fitted on the floor, inlaid in the walls, carried from great distances and at great expense? These things are pointless and unnecessary. Without them, isn't it possible to live healthy? Aren't they the source of constant trouble? Don't they cost vast sums of money that through public and private charity may have benefited many? Being good is the same as being a philosopher. If you obey your father, you will follow the will of a man. If you choose the philosopher's life, the will of the universe. It is plain, therefore, that your duty lies in the pursuit of philosophy. For mankind, evil is injustice and cruelty and indifference to a neighbor's trouble, while virtue is brotherly love and goodness and justice and beneficence and concern for the welfare of your neighbor. Husband and wife should come together to craft a shared life, procreating children, seeing all things as shared between them, with nothing withheld or private to one another, not even their bodies.